After impact, awry architecture, muscles, tentacle bone, rubble chokehold, falling, still. Thank you so much for coming um, and joining me here for the launch of um, After Impact Visual Poetry Exhibition right here at the um, White Box Gallery. What happens is this rolls into the window and will be on display until May 16th. Um, thanks so much to Katrina and Fringe uh, Headquarters for hosting. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Claire Lacey and I am currently a PhD candidate at the University of Otago and I'm writing about poetry and brain injury. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm taking my personal experience with brain injury and I am writing creatively about it and also critically. And the way that that has come about is that in 2014, I was playing roller derby and I had a very serious concussion. And when I say very serious, I mean I was nauseous, I was trembling, I was unable to process language, I couldn't read or write, I couldn't walk properly, my whole body started tilting to the left, the room was always spinning, it was like I was constantly drunk, I was in severe pain, my neck muscles seized up so I couldn't turn my head without turning my whole body. Um, so all these were pieces of my concussion um, that, you know, you, you join a contact sport like roller derby and you think, okay, I have some risk and I'd had concussions before, but none of them were like this one. And it really did change my life. I not only had to stop playing roller derby, but I lost my job and spent over a year in rehab just trying to get back to normal daily functioning. And at the time, what was missing for me was a way to express what had happened. Virginia Woolf once said, let a sufferer try to describe a pain in his head and language at once runs dry. So I didn't have the language to communicate with doctors, with my friends and family. I wasn't able to tell people what was going on. And in, in the meanwhile, my brain was constantly stuttering and stopping and I was having absence seizures, which is when you just go blank and stop reacting to things. So all this was going on. I was trying to get medical help. It was very difficult to, to do that. Uh, so, I was kind of grasping, grasping, grasping. Okay, how do, I, how do I find the words? How do I find the words when the narrative of your life has been disrupted? When you go from thinking, oh, I'm gonna be playing for Team Canada in a year to going, how do I boil an egg so that I can eat a lunch? Wait, I haven't brushed my teeth yet. Wait, I haven't, what, who, who am I? What's, what's going on? And so I'm going to um, start reading you some pieces about that. This one's called SCAT-3. So it uses the language from the SCAT test, which is the sports concussion assessment tool, a test that they use on the sidelines, but also as you're going through um, various medical services, they will apply this test again and again, which is a list of symptoms and a series of cognitive tests to see where you're at to, to measure your baseline and your improvement. Concussion is a disturbance in brain function caused by a direct or indirect force to the head. It results in a variety of non-specific signs and or symptoms. Some examples listed below and most often does not involve loss of consciousness. Concussion should be suspected in the presence of any one or more of the following. On you, it's snowing a disturbance. Symptoms should fog and stall direct stroke indirect. Please release me, my darling, triggers atypical presentation. I miss music like I miss myself. The curve of the earth, a skull flashing, drunken ship lilts and suspected. Out of focus, example unsteadiness, example not tracking, example shutters, example pick up a glass of water in the wind outside, it's dark and the syllables unslung. I'm all alone in here. What if there's a murderer, a man with an ax and a grin and the glass shatters my hand forgotten its purpose? Two. You've got red on you. It's day five and I can read, but every sentence carries a cost. 
I read anyways to stop the chatter. If I read for 10 minutes, the pain escalates. Who is this stranger weeping in my bed? If 20 minutes, unslung syllables, when eye compensation fatigue, snowy vision, hypnothermia rolls in, fogging up the words. Orkin, I think. Orkin. I can't see the shape of it. Is this a poem? Note. A hit to the head can sometimes be associated with more serious brain injury. Any of the following warrants consideration of activating emergency procedures and urgent transportation to the nearest hospital. The sea sucks the river out with a straw, leaving sludge slashed with steel sky. Fog hunches where the sun sets. Donut and ice cream stall shutter, last customer still licking chops. It was a one-two punch shoulder to skull. Deviation from baseline reveals cognitive dysfunction. A year and half a world later, the Coast Guard station illuminates, officers in yellow safety vests buzzing into radios. Four put on life preservers, climb into a rescue craft. Towed by a tractor flashing through blue lights, they set off too slow, it seems, but speed is hard to judge when riverbed stretches over horizon. Back home in the foothills, the horizon hangs at 115.6 kilometers, give or take. But we are lower here at the Humber, closer to the curve of the earth. Soon they shrink to flashing blue, still no offing in sight. I am going to test your memory. I will read you a list of words, and when I am done, repeat back as many words as you can remember in any order. I think I'm having a stroke. Numbness, ice sharp, spikes into left side. Skull tectonics shaking down my spine, my jaw, my eye trembling, skyscrapers no longer straight, cracked foundations. Denny's not here, Mrs. Torrance. Blubbering snot runs into my mouth, moving hurts, I cry and want my dog back, my mummy, anybody, please. Heartbreak begins in the head, numbskull. Every sentence carries a cost, and this is independence. You shouldn't be alone, the doctor said. Go to emergency if there is any numbness or tingling, but I don't anticipate you will need to. This is worse than numbness or tingling. This is all the words like agony and stabbing and motherfucking call 911. Every sentence, call 911. Carries, call 911. Accost, please. But my body just lies. I am going to repeat the same list again. Repeat back as many words as you can remember in any order, even if you have said the word before. Helena, Montana. The blizzard triggers staggering, sparkles like another shot to the skull. No, I'm not okay. I hope the deer hits the car so that everyone else survives. This use of pronouns is forced geometry, unable to comply. I know I have something to say. The facial tick rolls it into a ball beside my tongue, resting in my left cheek. It's raining, it's pouring. Sparkle is snoring. She went to bed and bumped her head and never got up in the morning. At least, sometimes I think that's how it goes. On the porch, the snow that isn't here falls beautiful and thick in front of the evergreens. Church bells aren't ringing. There are no churches here. I meander like a drunkard, pace the baseball diamond, a klutz waltz, neuromuscular shamble of muscles not firing and vestibular injury. I realize I am a replicant, a cyborg malfunction. One, two, scuff. Mrs. Palmer, there are things dark and heinous in this world. One, two, scuff. Want to scuff. Want lose cough. Ms. Plummer, 
after things drop and hang us in this, in this world. Practice makes perfect as I take the scat test again and again, but every sentence carries a cost. In the dark, wishing for shattered bones. In the dark, wishing for a knock at the door. In the dark, wishing for a doctor. In the dark, vertigo of dead drunk punk decibels. In the dark, deer on the road. Do you remember that list of words I read a few times earlier? Tell me as many words from that list as you can remember, in any order. A cormorant stands black sentry on wooden piling as the sea tucks itself in. Every sentence carries a cost. So that piece has formed the cornerstone of all the rest of the poetry that I've been writing since then. It pulls from medicine and it pulls from um, my diary entries. I was keeping an audio diary at the time. Um, so a lot of that language uh, comes again and again because my friends kept saying I had a lost deer look. And so then the deer winds up on, on the road in front of cars. And, um, and so with this piece, um, a wry architecture, I imagine the body as a building, and with my impact, I wound up losing my sense of balance, my proprioception, and I had a vestibular injury which affects the crystals in your ear. And so my whole body wound up like this, and I felt dead straight. And my left eye started dripping and wasn't working in conjunction with my right eye, so I wasn't seeing things clearly. Um, muscles, tentacle, bone, is the neck not moving and your body trying to save itself from further pain, but actually causing more as it squeezes, trying to keep the neck from shifting. Um, and at the bottom here are the letters of my roller derby name. I went as Sparkle Motion, combined with the letters of my name, Claire Lacey, um, which it feels like I had given up for a while when I was playing roller derby because Sparkle motion was exciting, and I was doing that for, for full-time work, really, and was, you know, headed for Team Canada, and then all of a sudden, that story was gone for me. Um, and I uh, wound up needing a cortisone injection in my neck because there was swelling between two of my vertebrae, C2 and C3. Um, so I'm going to read a poem about that experience of the hospital. <laughs> I, can, I, can, I can see people wincing, they've heard this before. Um, so I try and get very visceral with this poem. Um, so whatever you feel is okay, and, and if you need to step away or take a breath, that's, that's totally fine. Um, I won't be offended, I promise. Um, and I, I won't leave you in this place. We will, we will come around again to something better um, at the end. Vivisection has become my obsession since my cortisone injection. Pin down the subject. Slide a needle between C2 and C3. I feel moth fuzz. They numb me and proceed quietly. I catch movement peripherally. Head in a vice, I wish. I hadn't seen the giant fucking needles before being placed image guidance to target the target being inflammation between two of my vertebrae pain in my neck they adjust me machine a look through skin at spine and skull it's a good picture i am told as i stare at the white plastic of the equipment, when they administer the local, my whole body jerks. Try to stay still. The coldness spills through tissue and we wait. I imagine the needle tip snapping off in my neck, the insertion gone wrong, a severed sliver of spine. I catastrophe. 
terrifies. It is a symptom of my concussion. I observe myself doing it, see the irrationality of mind. This fear is physical response, but knowing doesn't fix anything. I am on venlafaxine to help with that. They just up the dose again. Pain in my neck, they adjust me, machine the procedure. They narrate my body trembles, but I don't feel it. I can't feel the needle, the needle, but my body reacts, or maybe the mind reacts. My nightmare possibilities in this lifetime of moment. Pain in my neck. They adjust me. Machine a pinch and chill. I tremble the machine with me. After, in the waiting room, I feel too hot. An older man puts his hand on my shoulder. Don't be scared. It's not as bad as all that. His face fish lenses. I push past his good intentions in time for the nurse to produce a bowl for my vomit. She lies me down. The room breathes. It is the hospital's diaphragm adjusting. Thanks for bearing with me through that one. Um, breath is something that I keep coming back to as central to the narrative because concussion can affect so many of your body systems. And one of the things that happened to me was my diaphragm actually stopped working consistently. And I was breathing using the secondary muscles in my neck. And my neck was already so seized up um, that it became really hard to catch my breath, which of course then creates a feedback loop. You feel anxiety and you can't catch your breath, so you feel greater anxiety, and so you start having a series of panic attacks, and so they put you on anti-anxiety medication, but of course that doesn't actually address relearning how to breathe, and I actually wound up having to go to a singing instructor who helped me with that, um, taught me some breathing exercises and helped calm down my diaphragm so that I can breathe again. Um, and, and so, th yeah, that comes into this piece as well. I really wanted the fan and the movement and the, the fabric is organza and the print is actually sublimated into it so the air passes completely through um, so it can move freely. Um, yeah, so I keep coming back to breath as that central central movement of uh, my work. And so I'll, I'll just finish off with one more piece and, and then I'd be happy to take questions and I promise this one will leave, leave you feeling slightly more optimistic um, because I am so fortunate um, to, to be here now in New Zealand and obviously I am reading and writing and working on a PhD and I realize that I am so fortunate to be in that position. Um, you feel free to come in and grab a seat. <laughs> Sheepish vigil. What, me? Guard sheep? Erin Mori made that up. It's my favorite line of poetry. I can't help it. Those four words follow me like a lamb when you have a piece of carrot or an end of bread in your pocket. But these sheep don't need guarding. They're self-sufficient. It's fair enough and natural. I was born in the suburbs of Toronto. I never thought of myself as sheepish, but I'm learning. I was more of a beagle once, ambitious, making a racket, tail wagging a hymn to motion. I knew tricks and moved so fast. It's wheels I'm thinking about, roller skates. I was sparkle motion, but she belongs in another poem, flashes by on page six, joyful and happy. Then she hit her head. Now I'm here, less confident, slower, what the heck? Morning is fair enough when your lights get turned out. This woolly beast doesn't mind if I'm glum. She likes my human fingers, the way they wheedle beneath wool to give scritches on skin. She leans in is how I know. Her inscrutable eyes half close. Her tail wags, she rattles her dags. I'm not sad, or less often now. 
My hands come away greasy. Her breath is grassy and sweet. This sweetness is a surprise. It just is. When it's time, she'll leave, or I will. That's natural. That's cheap. I'll write a poem about it. Later. Alone.